Okay, if you live in Florida, most likely you are part of an HOA, a homeowners association, as part of your community, as part of your neighborhood. And there are pros and cons with having these HOAs. But before we get into those, there is a uh, new law, which is known as the Homeowners Association Bill of Rights. It has taken effect as of, uh, I think, October 3rd, 2023. But the original bill was stripped down from a whopping 61 pages to about 16 pages. And it's kind of sad that it did that because some of these HOAs are kind of out of control and with a massive influx of people from other states coming into Florida, HOAs are getting uh, pretty much more residents, more communities are popping up with HOAs and with that comes a lot of abuse, fraud and stuff as you can see. So let's watch part of this uh, news Oh my God, CBS News. Again, I'm not a big news person. I don't like watching the news. I think it's a lot of propaganda, but let's just go through it and uh, we'll make some comments on this. So let's rock. Hang on a sec. This month, 18 new laws went into effect in Florida. One of them was HB 919, also known as the Florida Homeowners Association Bill of Rights. But what is now in effect as law is a pared down version of the original bill. CBS News Miami's Yvonne Taylor joins us from Kendall with what you need to know about the changes. HB 919 was a 60 page bill when he got to Tallahassee, but what was approved as a law at the state legislature was reduced to 17 pages. One of the most Yeah, there you go. You got a huge bill going into the Florida state legislature and they cut it down. It's just sad because there's a lot of corruption going on in some of these HOAs, a lot of power hungry people, people picking on residents over small nitpicky things while ignoring other important issues. Yeah, I don't know. It's there needs to be some correction some oversight committees with these uh, HOAs. Ambitious projects in regards to attaining more accountability and transparency. State legislator Juan Carlos Porras was the sponsor of HB 919. Hammock's community, which was in the news because of allegations of corruptions, emerged as a ray of light for HOA and condo associations. That the intent of the bill is still there. Well, it was not approved when we expected. Anna Danton lives in the hammocks. She paid elevated maintenance fees and was instrumental in the arrest of five people at her HOA. So yeah, this is the HOA co uh, committee, the staff of the hammocks in Florida. Uh, these people were basically stealing the money and buying nice cars, sports cars, basically robbing the um, tenants of the hammocks community uh, they were paying higher fees special assessments and the money is supposed to be put into the budget and uh, basically set aside for any uh, maintenance and all that stuff with the vendors pool maintenance general commons area maintenance security trash removal and uh, basically other stuff to keep the community up to par and uh, basically keep your resale values high on your houses. You don't want to have 50 cars in the front yard, you know, bulldozer parked in your front yard, all that crap. So uh, HOAs do have a pro. There's a lot of cons because humans are humans and they will do the best to steal from other people. And that's just rampant. Uh, so let's keep going on this. Wait. That these corrupt boards have a, a support system between the vendors that assist them to stay in power. So what's the ideal scenario? To make them responsible for their participation, not having to go to a lawsuit. We asked state representative if any violators of the law would face felony charges. At the moment, there's nothing higher than, than a misdemeanor. I know in the, in the original bill, we did have some, some felony charges. Transparency and conflict of interest. HOA officers and directors are now mandated to disclose any activity that could be perceived as conflict of interest. That also stayed. So what did not stay? <laughs> the main aspect I think that did not stay, like we mentioned, was this statewide task force as a sort of hotline for, for residents to be able to call and investigate some of these, some of these HOAs and, and condos. Yeah, so there you go. Did you hear what he said? 
the one that um, basically for the HOA members on the HOA board to disclose their partnerships with third party vendors that received the money to come into the neighborhoods to do maintenance and stuff like that. Uh, that was taken out, which is bad because it's a good old boy network in most of these towns and they're you know, helping the Bubba's out and probably a lot of corruption going on there. And uh, they help keep the HOA people, board members in power because they are themselves private companies and have a lot of money and they just scratch each other's backs. Again, people are inherently corrupt. And then when you put them on boards like this without accountability, bad things are gonna happen and that's what's happening right here. These people from the hammocks only got misdemeanors. They were basically embezzling money and all they got was misdemeanors. So I think what has to happen is civil suits go against these people. Um, they're just, you just gotta watch it. You gotta keep your eyes open. HOAs, it's pros and cons, uh, but it depends again on all people that run these things. Uh, the fact that the federal, the federal, the Florida legislature kind of stripped down the bill pretty much says a lot that probably the companies paid off some of these guys to basically whittle it down so they aren't affected because they are the recipients of a lot of money from these HOAs. Anyway, Florida is, it's going through some ups and downs. The housing market's out of control in that there is now more supply on the market. The, the exorbitant prices of houses, the amount of supply, and the amount of time the houses are staying on markets are going to start affecting some of these communities because, I don't know, people aren't going to be able to sell, people aren't going to be able to buy, the high interest rates. It's just, I don't know, I think people are sick of the high insurance, the high property taxes, and uh, some people just don't like the weather. So I think with the massive influx for the past three years from some of the, um, the blue states like New York and Florida, I mean, uh, California, people have said, I'm out, and they're going to go somewhere else like I know South Carolina is getting real hot uh, North Carolina and uh, people just even go back to California so I don't know what that's gonna do it's just it's just got too expensive too fast here and HOAs are not <clears throat> not making life easier in Florida I think they're ranked number two or no number one in the country for complaints as far as HOAs go and number two is California so let's go through the actual bill what's left and uh, this is <clears throat> HB 919 Homeowners Association and let's see it is here is here's the bottom line I want to point out it was approved and uh, these provisions take effect October 1st 2023 and it is it may be cited as the Homeowners Association Bill of Rights and revised requirements for the governance and regulation of homeowners associations and it's to require all notices of homeowners for homeowners associates and board meetings to specifically identify the agenda items of the meetings. Okay, we get that. And I'm part of an HOA. They have started sending out emails, so they are following the law. Revise the requirements for the association's use of a member's email to send notices, including allowing a member to designate an address different than the property address for all required notices. A lot of people are snowbirds. They don't live here full time. So you want to, you know, you can live off site and still get the, um, get notices. It requires that if a homeowner's association collects a deposit from a member for any reason, including to pay for expenses that may be incurred as a result of a construction on a member's parcel or other reason for such deposits, uh, the funds may not be commingled with other association fees. The member may request an accounting of such funds, and the association must remit payment of unused funds within 30 days. Yeah, I'm sure these HOAs, again, they're run by just regular schmoes, and they'll take your money for one fee you're supposed to pay and they'll just throw it in the, the general bucket. And then, of course, people are going to start putting that money in their pocket and going out and buying some Porsches. And that's what happened in the hammocks. Uh, do all HOAs do this? No, nah, but I think on average it happens more than you do realize because humans are human. And uh, corruption without accountability occurs. All right, you have to provide an officer, director, or manager who accepts kickbacks is subject to monetary damages under this act, federal act, uh, relating to the conditions imposing civil liability on the officers and directors of corporations and associations not for profit. Uh, provide that an officer or director must be removed from office and their access to official records denied if charged with the crimes of forgery of a ballot envelope or voting certificate used in homeowners association election. Basically don't do voter fraud. This Of all the funny things with all the election crap, 
they're funny. They're cracking down on HOA voting stuff. <laughs> that's where they draw the line, I guess. So that's what's kind of funny there. Uh, a lot of intimidation happens in some of the neighborhoods. These HOA guys get all kind of authoritarian and they think they own the residents and they boss them around. They complain, they file, um, put penalties on them, fees and all this crap, threatening residents and HOAs. It gets pretty bad, folks. Uh, I lived in Columbia, Maryland. They had HOA in the town. Pretty bad people, almost like North Korea. I would never live in uh, Columbia, Maryland. If you live there, you'd know how bad it is. If you're door is brown and it's a shade off, they're going to come after you and they'll come, probably throw you in prison. That's how bad they are in Howard County, Maryland, Columbia. Anyway, let's get back to re, uh, the uh, bill says it would require directors and officers of an association, including a developer controlled association to disclose specific activities which may pose a conflict of interest. He said it was taken out, but it's showing it's here. So if, if Billy Bob is on the HOA president and Billy Bob's brother runs the uh, landscaping company, yeah, that's a conflict of interest. And there's going to be a lot of shenanigans going on there. Billy Bob's brother coming in and, oh, well, we need to put in some more plants and I'll get to charge a quadruple what I charge other people. That's what happens. Come on. You, you know how it works. Open your eyes, red pill yourselves, and uh, know there's a lot of corruption going on. you got to keep an eye on these folks. All right, you got to clarify that a developer's appointment of an officer or director does not create a presumption that the officer or director has a conflict of interest. Uh, with regard to the performance of his or her duties. More of that conflict of interest. Kind of cutting down on the Bubba network. Uh, let's see. We notice the notice requirements for imposing and collecting fines, including providing members notice of how to cure a violation, if applicable. All right. And they have to provide criminal... Uh, what is it? Provide criminal prohibition related to fraudulent voting activities. Again... First degree misdemeanor, ah, first degree misdemeanors, including preventing members from voting and menacing, threatening, or using bribery to directly or indirectly influence or deter a member from voting. And that happens. It's small bubble town, and they'll come by and they'll intimidate you. And I've seen this crap happen down where I'm at in uh, Southwest Florida. Yeah, it's people are people, and you just got to be tough, man. You got to be able to push back, speak up, stand up for yourselves. Now, the scary thing is in the bill, like you said, he wanted to have a hotline where you can call and like this a narc on your HOA and have them come investigate it. They kind of took that out, which I think, I don't know, who's going to man that? I wouldn't know. Just call the cops and you know, or, or file a lawsuit. I don't know. The act provides that HOA may levy fines against its members and, part, and articulates the amounts of those fines. The residents of the act limit the HOA's fine ability as follows. follows no fines or suspension due to a violation of the declaration bylaws or rules unless 14 days notice is given. So you have to give a notice. And you have a, you know, here's how you cure the notice and, you know, resolve it and all that stuff. Yeah, HOA members have the right to request an accounting statement from the HOA of the funds deposited. And the HOA must provide that accounting within seven days of the receipt of that request. So where is your money going each month? And in my community, they actually upped the HOA fee. Uh, they actually are putting on special, uh, special assessment fees here and there due to poor management of the community. So they pass it on. Again, you're the honest person going to work, collecting your paycheck, trying to raise your family. You're the sheep, and they're coming after you because they know you'll pay. Uh, just because they can't manage the neighborhood appropriately, you're, you're going to get a special assessment fee put on top of your regular HOA. And you're like, give me a break, man. So we were getting a few special assessment fees in my neighborhood. And... Uh, I kind of joked back and said, boy, these sure these uh <laughs> these special assessment fees are sure becoming more of like a daily assessment fee. And uh, yeah, they don't like pushback. So I'm probably targeted now. You know, who knows with these people? They always hold a hold a grudge against people that stand up to the bullies. Right. Florida's new homeowners association law explained how to find your HOA rules and regulation. I don't know why this is up here. They have a local cop thing there. Uh, I thought maybe they all got arrested, but they only got misdemeanors in the hammocks, man. Yeah, well, yeah. before you move in a neighborhood, do a Google search, news search on your neighborhood. You want to live and check the HOA, see what criminality has occurred. Ask the neighbors, uh, are the HOA people abusive? Are they violent? Are they uh, embezzling? You know, get a, get a feel. If they're bad, just don't move there. Or maybe rent for a couple months and see what it's like. All right, let's see. Yeah, my fees are about 500 bucks. Some places down where I'm at are 1,000 bucks. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. I, I my, my next house, I'm not going to live in an HOA. I want to live away from people. So I just, I'm getting kind of sick of Florida. 
But let's see. Uh, what are the new HOA laws in 2023? Uh, it, you know, here's the definition of HOA. Homeowners Association, it's supposed to enforce rules in a subdivision. Plan communities, again, so pro, pros are supposed to maintain the general common areas, the swimming pools, uh, some security, and then uh, maybe local or community internet and cable. They, and they, we just negotiated that with our community. I'm already paying AT&T, so I have no idea how I'm supposed to tell AT&T well, I'm part of a community thing. Is that going to screw up my service? So I'm really worried about that. If I call AT&T, they might discontinue my service and not keep it active, even though I told them I'm part of an HOA, which is my fees are covering it. We'll see how that goes. I'll let you know next month. Oh, yeah. So the HOA is run by a board of directors. Uh, they use them. Um, they typically use the monthly or annual fees members, uh, annual fees members pay for the maintenance of the community. That's pretty much all they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to harass you and make you feel like crap. Again, you're a normal citizen. You're living there. You agree to it. It's just they should just treat you human. Some are some are not nice people. Um, here's some other things that the new HOA bill in Florida does. Uh, yeah, it requires you have to notice. <clears throat> Notice for a homeowners association board meetings to identify each agenda uh, item for each meeting. It, uh, HOA member to designate an address other than physical address for delivery of required notices. Uh, it says that if a homeowner HO let's just do it. If a homeowner's HOA collects a financial deposit f from a member for any reason, those funds can't be ported to any association funds. We talked about that. It revises the notice of requirements for collecting fines, including giving HOA members instructions on how to fix a violation. Just don't fine people. And that's how some of these little, I hate the HOA Nazis is what they call them in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, they just go out and just beat you over a stick. And yeah, if they had their way, they'd probably throw you in a gulag. Oh, my God. Give some people power and they'll abuse it. Uh, it is now a first degree misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. A first degree. That's like nothing. Uh, for an HOA board member to prevent members from voting. That, yeah, good luck trying to opt out. No, it's, uh, you can't opt out. It's like trying to get out of taxes. Yeah, I don't know. My, my advice is research the neighbor before you move into it. Uh, ask the neighbors who live there already. And uh, do your research, man. Just don't buy a house because it's cute. You may jump into something you totally hate. A majority of the state's associations will no longer be able to restrict the storage of items that are not visible from a parcel's frontage or adjacent parcel. For some HOA communities, this will represent a significant adjustment. Their board of directors, property management, and legal counsel will need to carefully consider the new law and any future decisions over enforcement actions regarding the storage of items. Yeah, if you had stuff you can store uh, in your yard without it being seen, uh, that's fine. Before you get written up and fined and everything, uh, if you can put it in your backyard so it's not visible from the frontage, you are now good to go. You can put boats and stuff, uh, ATVs and stuff. It's got to be out of sight, which makes sense. Otherwise, people would come up. People suck on the other side, too. They'll put crap in their front yard. And especially in Florida, you have a truck up on blocks and a refrigerator sitting in the front yard. So the HOA serves some purpose there. Uh, but in general, you are allowed to store stuff in your backyard. If you have a backyard, Florida, most people, it's small. Communities are tight. There's not many places to store stuff. So, yeah, you got to think about that, too. Let me know your horror stories with your HOAs. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a eye-opener when you realize how bad they can get. And, uh, yeah, let me know what, what issues you've had, what you recommend. And if you're moving to Florida, live in Florida, let me know what you think or what you've dealt with them, how to get around them, can you fight them, uh, how you researched them. I don't know. I just tell buyer beware. Do your own research. And do you want to live there? Check everything. Check the neighbors, check the HOA, and maybe if you can rent in the neighborhood somehow, that is probably the win because then you, know, you get a better feel for if things are good or bad. And it's Florida. It's really a weird time right now with the massive influx of people. Now a lot of people wanting to leave because the high insurance, the high property tax, and the high cost of houses. It's ridiculous. Anyway, thought this was interesting. HOA, Florida. Interesting stuff you got to know. All right, I'm out. Take care. I will talk to you later.